It's gonna be game number two. It's between Shota Yasoka and Nicholas Price. And uh, Shota is playing Sultai Ultimatum, but with some twists, right? It's still Shota. He's not gonna just download the latest list and, and fire it up. He's gonna put his own little twist on it. But on the other side, this is a good time to highlight Nicholas Price, A, seven and one. I mean, these players are now uh, co-leaders of the tournament and the person who wins this will stay that way. Nicholas is playing Naya Tokens, Paul. This is a deck we haven't seen much of. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of, I, I would say, one of the newer decks that have risen in popularity in Standard. And uh, I will say, uh, trying this deck out, it is extremely fun to play. It's probably my favorite deck to play in Standard. Uh, it's It's got the potential to have just the most explosive draws with a turn one Yespera Sentinel into Clarion Spirit. So uh, the deck can, can, can put on a lot of pressure really quickly. Uh, where it struggles, though, is uh, playing against Sweepers. The deck mm. doesn't really have... A lot of ways to kind of close out the game. There's there's no ember cleave or or, or ways to kind of provide a lot of reach. So um, you're you're just really trying to amass an army and hope to kill your opponent and um, and just kind of hope your opponent doesn't have a sweeper. Uh, a really strong four drop that it does have access to that allows you to kind of fill back up though is um, Toski, Bearer of Secrets. So mm -hmm. even if you do have a really fast start, if you can land and nail a, a Toski and attack with all your creatures, it's okay if your opponent plays a sweeper because you've just drawn three or four cards prior to the sweeper being cast. Yeah, the secret's out on that one. Uh, we'll see if we get a chance <laughs> to see Legendary Squirrel hit the battlefield here. One interesting card of note here, since we are coming in in game number two, a show to up a game, is Roiling Vortex there out of the sideboard for Nicholas Price. Something that could annoy Shoti Asoka potentially. Yeah. It, it does a couple of things. It, it is a nice little card to have that puts on a little bit of pressure, right? That is resilient to sweepers. Uh, but more importantly, that second line of text on the bottom mean, says, if you ever cast a spell without paying for its mana cost, you take five damage, which mm -hmm. means when you cast Immersion Ultimatum, you take 10 damage. So what you want to do is find a Binding of the Old Gods and get rid of this, this enchantment before you cast your Immersion Ultimatum. That's right. The only downside to playing Royal and Vortex is the prevalence of Binding of the Old Gods. It, it's everywhere, right? And it's yeah. one of the key cards for the Sultai Ultimatum deck. So, And they play four in the main most, for the most part. So it's a little rough to, to have that thing actually stay there. But yeah, you know, 80 card deck, who knows? In right. this case, we knows. And as you can see, there is a Binding of Old Gods in hand here for Shota. Though he has already resolved an Omen of the Sea and is kind of continuing along the, the normal development path here is he's probably just going to cast another one of those. Yeah, but this is a relatively anemic start here for uh, for what I've seen from the token strategy. I mean, a turn two vortex, you're putting zero creatures on the battlefield to uh, put pressure on, on the Salt High Ultimatum deck, and you do not want to get into a late game situation with no pressure. And right. so this is firmly um, putting Shota in the lead here. I mean, you know, he's got a couple of omens, he's developing his mana, his hand is loaded, and he's just taking one damage a turn here. Right, Shota's like, this is great. You're just not going to do anything. Clearing Spirit goes into hand here for Nick Price. Doesn't even play it. He wants to get the, the guaranteed value. Last turn was Gigantha Tax. Uh, Gem Razor just stays in hand. This is not going well here for, for Nicholas Price. He just hasn't cast anything super relevant. And now we see Binding the Old Gods come down, and it's going to take out that Roiling Vortex like we talked about. Yeah. Now, this isn't a bad turn. Mm -hmm. You will be able to go Clarion Spirit and then mutate the Gem Razor onto the Spirit to mm -hmm. get the Binding of the Old Gods off the battlefield. So now he'll have a 4-4 four, four Trampler and a 1-1 one, one token in play. But we know by just looking at Shota's hand that you know he has plenty of answers currently. Including another Binding of the Old Gods, which is going to go on the stack on the battlefield and send that Gem Razor slash uh, Clarion Spirit packing and leaving... Nicholas Price with the grand old board state of a 1-1. One, one. Right, but this oh, will God. also be yes, mutated. Sentinel. Brutal. Yeah, th <laughs> that's the good news, is that yeah. we get to run back that same plan, and this time it's a creature that started the turn on the battlefield, so he's even going to get to slam with it after it takes out the Binding of the Old Gods. But boy, he needs more pressure than this. This is just not enough to get the job done, and that Yes, Sentinel Sentinel's not going to help out. Yeah, not at all. I mean, take a look at Shota's hand. He's got a Pelucranos here and a Heartless Act here yeah. to be able to deal with this Gem Razor, even if Nicholas, for example, top decks something like a Giant Killer.
Glucronos Unchained resolves here for Shota as he continues to, uh, ooh, Toski, Bear of Secrets off the top of the library. That gem this raiser does have flying. Yeah, and you might be wondering why is Shota keeping in Disdainful Stroke in this matchup that's predominantly looking to run you over? Toski is one of the main reasons. There's a lot of extremely powerful four mana spells in this deck. Showdown of the Scalds, Felidar Retreat, and Toski. And those are honestly really the cards that you really care about uh, at, from the Sultai Ultimatum side. So he's keeping the Disdainful Strokes to be able to deal with these threats. Now keep in mind though, Toski, oh, of course, Toski is actually uncounterable. Right, so, so, that so was... the counter magic doesn't do anything there. It, it, it's actually for the Felidar retreats and, of course, the Suodan of the Skulls. That's right, the big finishers there from Nicholas Price. But as we see there, Shota had a really nice backup plan where he didn't actually need to, to worry about the Toski that turn because he just had a removal spell for the only other creature right. that could actually get through. Toski has lots of lines of text. It's indestructible, uncounterable, lets all your creatures draw cards. And it must attack every turn if able. Well, Paul, don't worry. You know, as always, chat has uh, handled your slight miscue there with grace and humility. I'm sure they have. Yeah. I, I am sure. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, chat. But yeah. All right. I... Is it Gigantha o'clock here, Paul? Like, is oh, that yeah. the... <laughs> it's time to play a 5-5 five five that will not do a whole lot with what's going on on the board. Shota's just going to block with the Pelucranos here, and then uh, next turn, he's going to get a huge Yori, and he can reset the Pelucranos. He can use the Pelucranos this turn to kill the Yaspera Sentinel, and then next turn, just play out a Yorian, reset Pelucranos, and then draw, scry four and draw two cards off the two Omen of the Seas that he has in play. Well, let's just say I like Shota's side of this matchup a lot. A tiny bit. <laughs> just a tiny bit. A real lot. Oh, wow. Is that a Gargs? That is a Gargadon, which is amazing because Toski has to attack every turn. Ooh. Hey, Giant Killer, well-timed. Yep, that, that's about the best card you could have had in this situation, but Nicholas Price still in a lot of trouble here with all the resources that Shota has available to him. Interesting. So Nicholas choosing to attack with everything to maybe have uh, give Shota some awkward blocks, but looks like he's just going to go ahead and fire off this uh, Heartless Act to get the Giganta off the battlefield. Yeah, this is desperation here for Nicholas. He, he is just trying to get through with anything he can to get some Toski triggers going and try to find a way to go over the top. And it's not going to work. Uh, it's just not. Yeah. Look at this. Shota's now the one turning his creature That's sideways. always a bad sign. <laughs> Yeah, and if you notice, Nicholas choosing not to play the Giant Killer here, I think he's waiting to see if maybe he draws an Edgewall Innkeeper off the top to try to uh, claw back into the game, you know, maybe draw a card with the Giant Killer if he, if he does happen to draw an Innkeeper next turn. Exactly. He, he needs to go for the Desperation plays. He can't take the baseline plays of like, well, I'll just play a Giant Killer and I'll start using it. No, he, he really needs to find an over-the-top play. Kind of like casting Yorian when you already have Pelucranos and two Omen of the Sea. Like, that's the kind of play <laughs> that he's looking for. Oh, good. Another Toski Bear of Secrets. Cool. Yeah. This, this, this draw has not been fun for Nicholas Price. Really, from no. the very get-go, it's also... You know, you know when you play against a control deck and they just answer everything, they just have the exact <laughs> this is perfect the... lineup. Oh, this is a Vigilant Toski play? All right. Oh, yeah. This is a, you know, I'm dead, but I'm just going to keep playing my cards. Yeah, this is yeah. this is going to be GG here. Uh, Shoti Asoka, 7-1. And, one. and uh, on the precipice of improving to 8-1. and one. Nicholas Price, though, this run very much still intact here. 7-2 uh, and two after this match finishes. Uh, still very, very good. And this is just Shota going through the motions here. Look at this. He's even got Coma. And that has to be enough. Of course, a fabled passage off the top just to, to make sure that uh, nothing can happen here for Nicholas Price as he scoops him up. And Shota Yasoka wins the match two games to zero in impressive fashion, too. He really kind of crushed him there, Paul. And, you know, 
We've noted, of course, many times over the course of coverage, how much Shota loves to play control. He even just says it himself. Like when we asked him what his play style was, he said, I like control, I like to play fast. Like, yeah, that was and, it. And, yeah, and Shota has, uh, it, it actually feels like it's been a while since we've seen him kind of have a top performance, but he's well on his way. And that really shouldn't come as a surprise because Shota is, he should be considered one of the best players still out there and and I think perhaps might be a little bit even underrated at this point just because we haven't seen him put up those results but you know when you see uh you know the top players whenever you see the top players talk about Shota they, it's always in the highest light it's like don't ever play a Shota deck but when Shota plays that deck you got to be careful